Hi everyone. Now that you've had a general introduction to the deep sea and have a picture in mind how it looks like, I want to talk to you about the resources you find there. From peculiar metallic rocks, the polymetallic nodules, over blackish blue crusts, the cobalt crusts, to hydrothermal volcanic vents, in the next episodes you will learn about the three types of resources you find. In this episode, I will talk about the polymetallic nodules, what they are, how they look like and how they are formed. In fact, if you want to know how a nodule would look like in daylight, you can check out the interview with Mr. Heckel. He has a nodule lying on his desk. Polymetallic nodules, or more often also called manganese nodules, are blackish brown rock accumulations on the seafloor. They look like flattened small balls, sometimes round, sometimes irregularly formed, varying in size from microscopically small to more than 20 cm in diameter. However, most nodules have a size between 3 and 8 cm in diameter, meaning the size of a large egg to that of a potato. They are formed of concentric layers of mostly iron and manganese hydroxide around a core. We can find them concentrated in specific places on the deep sea floor around the world. They contain great amounts of valuable metals we need for our everyday life, like copper, nickel and cobalt. Especially the electro industry needs those metals for our smartphones, computers or batteries. Often these metals are even more concentrated in these nodules than they are in deposits on land. This makes them so economically interesting to harvest and an important mineral resource. The individual manganese nodules lie loosely on the seabed sediment, often partly or completely buried by a thin sediment layer. They vary greatly in abundance, in some cases touching one another and covering more than 70% of the seafloor. Polymetallic nodules are found in both shallow for example the Baltic Sea, and deeper waters, for example the Central Pacific. But the greatest occurrences can be found in abyssal deep sea plains in depths between 3,500 and 6,500 meters, where sedimentation rates are low. The most important deposits of nodules are found in the northeastern Pacific, extending from the west coast of Mexico to Hawaii. This place is called Manganese Nodule Belt and it is roughly 9 million square kilometers big. That is approximately the size of whole Europe and lies between the Clarion and Clipperton Fracture Zone, often called CZZ. Other big areas are the Peru Basin, the Penguin Basin and the only zone outside the Pacific in the Indian Ocean. The composition of nodules varies with their environment of formation. But in addition to manganese and iron, they can contain nickel, copper and cobalt, as well as traces of other valuable metals, such as molybdenum, zirconium and rare earth elements. The manganese makes up the biggest part of the nodules, up to 30%, which is why they are so often called manganese nodules. The formation of manganese nodules is one of the slowest of all known geological phenomena. One nodule grows around the order of a centimeter over several million years. Therefore, the nodules only grow in regions where the environmental conditions remain stable for extensive time periods, like the deep sea. Due to their slow growth, the nodules of the central Pacific have an age of about two to three million years. They form through the aggregation of layers of iron and manganese hydroxides around a central particle, such as a shell, a shark tooth or a small rock fragment. Dissolved metal compounds like mangan or iron oxides and other numerous trace metals in the seawater or in the pore water of the seafloor sediments precipitate over time around this nucleus. These compounds form layers in more or less crystallized forms. This growth process mainly takes place in two ways. In the hydrogenous process, metal compounds sinking through the water are slowly precipitated, leading to concretions of iron and manganese. 
compounds of other metals join in smaller amounts. The second process is referred to as diagenetic growth. This process does not occur in the water column, but within the sediments. Metal compounds that are present in the water between the sediment particles are deposited. This is seawater that penetrates into the seafloor and reacts with the sediments to become enriched with metal compounds. Where it rises up and out of the sediment, the metal compounds are likewise deposited around the nodule growth core. So, the sediment has to be capable of holding large amounts of pore water. And diagenetic nodule growth can only take place in very aqueous sediments. Now that you've learned about the polymetallic nodules, you can investigate further if you want to, with the links and information in the description box below. Larissa is going to explain to you what cobalt costs are in the next episode. And if you have any questions, just type them in the comments. Stay tuned and see you in the next episode.